Hey everyone, Mike from Morgan Inspection Services. Today I'm going to show you how to install or replace a GFCI receptacle. Yeah, technically it is called receptacle. I'm sure I'm going to be using and interchanging the words receptacle and outlet throughout this video. Whether you're replacing an old receptacle with a GFCI or replacing a broken GFCI receptacle with a new GFCI receptacle, I'm going to walk you through everything step by step and I'm going to show you some tips along the way that should make this process easier for you. So what's the big deal about a GFCI? Well first, they're quite a bit bigger than a standard receptacle and that's because there's some really smart electronics inside. These electronics monitor the current that's running through the receptacle and what they do is shut off power if it detects what's called a ground fault. That's when electricity is leaking through a path that is not intended, such as through a person or water or something like that. And they shut off the electricity immediately to protect that person from shock or possible electrocution. You'll typically find GFCIs in areas that can potentially be wet, kitchens, bathrooms, on the exterior of the home, in the garage, as well as a few other areas. And the neat thing about a GFCI is it can protect receptacles that are wired to this one, basically receptacles that are downstream of this receptacle. So if you ever mysteriously have a receptacle or multiple receptacles that are dead, you might want to check and see if they're tied onto a GFCI and that GFCI might be tripped. And that could save you a headache or potentially having to call an electrician to help you figure out what's going on. Okay, let's get into the wiring of the GFCI receptacles. This is where the GFCIs differ from a standard receptacle. On a standard receptacle, when you're wiring it, you can connect either black wire to either of the brass colored screws and either white wire to either of the silver colored screws. But on a GFCI, you must connect the wire that's bringing power in to the line side and receptacles that are powered off of this one, basically downstream receptacles must be connected to the load side. So that is a critical difference and it's something that's very important that you do when you're installing your GFCI. You must connect the power to the line side. And one way to remember that is in line, you have the letters IN, spells IN. So on the line side is where the power comes in to the receptacle. So let me show you what this looks like. The power comes in to the line side, and if you connect additional outlets to the load side, they're protected by the GFCI. If you're not adding downstream outlets, then you can ignore the load terminals altogether. And here's another important detail. You can also connect additional wires to the line side. For instance, if you've got a light that's powered off this circuit, maybe there's a wire in this box where the GFCI is being installed that powers the light. You don't want that light necessarily turning off when the GFCI trips. so that light wire would be connected to the line side. So you can have more than one wire on that line side. So that line side is always hot even when the GFCI is tripped and that way the light will be on even if the GFCI trips and that's an important thing to remember. But remember that anything that you want protected by this GFCI must be connected to the load side. Another thing that a lot of people don't realize is on the back of this there's a strip gauge that shows how much insulation you need to strip off, basically how much wire you want exposed. And that's right here on this one. You never want to strip off too much insulation and you always want to strip off enough. You want it exactly right. If you have too much insulation stripped off, then when you have that wire installed, you can have too much wire sticking out here and potentially cause a short circuit. If you don't have enough insulation stripped off, then when you install the wire into the receptacle, you can have some of that insulation up under the contact and then you're not going to have a good connection. And sometimes a poor connection can lead to overheating and overheating can result in a fire. So it's important that you strip off the proper amount of insulation. Okay, let's talk about wiring options. You've got two options of how you can connect the wire to the GFCI. One is you can connect it right there on the screw. And if you do that, you want this end of the wire basically going in a clockwise direction. That way, when you screw the screw down, it will pull the wire snug under that screw and give you a better connection. You do not want this 
wire. Let me see if I can get this where you can see it. You don't want it turned this way where it's basically going counterclockwise. You want it turned this way. And that's one option. The other option is using the backstab method. You've got these little slots right here. You can stick the wire right in, tighten the screw, and that gives you a very strong connection. And that's a little bit faster. Now, while we're talking about that, on these regular outlets, you've got the screws, basically the same as on the GFCI. And you've also got these little holes where you can put in the wire. These holes are designed to hold 14 gauge wire. This is 12 gauge, so it doesn't actually go in. But the connector is a little spring clip. It doesn't give a very secure connection. So if you ever install these standard outlets, I highly recommend you use the screws and not the backstab method. Another very important thing is where you connect the wires to. You see you've got gold screws on one side. You've got silver screws on the other side. The silver screw is on the side with the wide slot. The wide slot is the neutral. And the gold screw is on the side with the narrow slot, which is the hot. Anyway, the gold screw always takes the hot wire, the black wire. And the silver screw is where you connect the white wire. It's important, it's critical that you connect the hot and the neutral wires to the correct side of the GFCI to maintain the correct polarity. Okay, well let's install this thing. First thing you must do is turn off the power at the breaker. You never want to do any electrical work with the power on. So you turn it off, you pull the receptacle out of the wall, and before you start touching things, trying to disconnect wires, use a non-contact voltage detector to make sure that those wires are indeed dead. You don't want to risk getting shocked or electrocuted. Now if you're replacing a broken GFI, if you already have a GFCI installed, you want to make sure you look at which wire comes off the line side and which wire comes off the load side. You might want to mark one of those wires. I always mark the line side, the one that's going to bring the power in, with a piece of tape. That way, when I'm ready to install the new one, I know which one was the line side and which one's feeding the other receptacle. So that's critical that you do that. If you're replacing an old standard outlet with a GFCI, then you're not going to have a line and load site. So what you're going to do is once you have those wires disconnected, you want to put wire nuts on the two black wires, on the hot wires. Go turn your breaker back on and use the non-contact voltage detector to see which one of those two black wires has power. And remember which one of those it is. Go turn the breaker back off then that wire that you've identified as the hot wire is what you will connect to the line side and the other black wire you're going to connect to the load side. And you also want to make sure that the neutral corresponding to the hot wire is also connected on the line side and that the other one is connected on the load side. It's critical that you match the hot and the neutral wires from each set of wires on the, on the screws when you do this. So once you've got that connected, you work the wires back into the box, you push the receptacle in, you get it screwed in, you put your cover plate on, then go turn the power back on. And then I would suggest using something like a receptacle tester. Make sure the GFCI is reset, plug this in, and make sure you've got power. And check all the other downstream receptacles, make sure you've got power to those. Then trip the GFCI and check the GFCI and the downstream receptacles. None of them should have power. And if this is the case, then you've properly wired a GFCI and you're done. One thing I'll say here is if you've replaced an old outlet and it's an ungrounded system, then when you plug this in, if you try to use the test button on this tester, it will not trip an ungrounded GFCI. You actually need the to use the built-in test button on the GFCI. So that's basically it. A couple of reminders, use that strip gauge to make sure you've stripped off a proper amount of insulation. Make sure you connect the black wires to the gold or brass colored screws. Make sure you connect the white wires, the neutrals, to the silver colored screws. Make sure you connect the power in and its corresponding neutral to the line side. And make sure you connect the other set of black and white wires to the load side. That's basically all you've got to do. 
Make sure you have the power off when you're working with any electricity. And that's all that's required to install a GFCI. I really hope this video has been helpful to you. I certainly appreciate you watching. I sure would appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe. I try to put out these helpful educational videos regularly. And this way you'll be notified when I put out new videos. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.